AEW Championships have been vacated, WWE signed a top three agent that AEW were interested in, an AEW debut leaked, and my review of AEW Dynamite. I'm Luke Owen, and this is the Wrestle Talk News. Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Before we get into our first story, this will contain spoilers for this Saturday's collision. So if you want to skip it, click ahead to the timestamp on screen or in the chapter in the video description. Just giving you some time to do that, right? Because we are going to pull into spoiler sound. Like, so be ready. We are about to pull into spoiler town in three, two, one. See you Punk return to AEW. Nah, I'm just kidding. During the tapings of this Saturday's collision, the Gang Bang Gang beat three enhancement talents but were then stripped of their unified trio's titles by Christopher Daniels as the group tried to enact the free bird rule while Jay White is out selling the injuries from the angle last week. Daniels announced that new champions will be crowned in a match between the Bang Bang Gang and the Patriarchy at a later date. Just seven days after her Forbidden Door match with Mercedes Monet, it was reported by Record Mexico that both AEW and WWE had interest in signing Stephanie Vacur full time once her deal with CMLL was done. Well, it didn't take long for that deal to be done, as CMLL and New Japan announced one day later in a joint statement that Stephanie Vacker was leaving their promotions, vacating her belt, and dropping out of her scheduled match to Fantastica Mania USA on July 13th. Vacker would then confirm the news via her own statement on social media. But little did we know at that point, Vacker had reportedly already paid WWE a visit. As reported by Fightful Select Sean Ross Sapp, Sorset had claimed that Vacker was spotted at NXT heatwave in Toronto with the belief that she was WWE bound. In AEW, many were already resigned to the fact that they had missed out. Fightful Select report that despite AEW holding talks with Vacker, sources in the company thought it was likely that she was going to sign with WWE, with the company registering interest in her following her bout at Forbidden Door. Then, just a few hours later, it was confirmed. First by Record Mexico, then PW Insider, then finally by Shawn Michaels himself, who posted on Twitter to welcome Vacker aboard NXT. Keeping in line with the breakneck pace of this story, shortly after her WWE signing, Dave Meltzer would then report that the belief in WWE is that Vacker will be first unveiled at a live event in Mexico City on July 13th, with another event in Monterey the following night. From there, she will head to NXT rather than the main roster. Corey Brennan of Fightful noted on Twitter, Stephanie Vacker will begin in NXT for the same reason as Julia. She has wrestled for most of her career in one country and has not experienced the WWE and American way of life. It's nothing to do with their in-ring work. Now that she has signed with WWE, RevPro here in the UK have announced that she's been pulled from her scheduled matches with the promotion, one of which was set to be against Danny Luna at the Copper Box on All In Weekend. This news comes just after the report that the Motor City Machine Guns might be heading to WWE when everyone thought they were AEW bound. But WWE aren't the only ones set to debut a star from a Mexican promotion, as we may now know the identity of the mysterious masked man who got a vignette on last week's collision. According to Bodyslam.net, the identity of the mystery man is former AAA star Aramis. According to their report, Aramis will debut under a new name, Hologram, and is reportedly set to be given a hacker-type gimmick. Lucha Blog would second Body Slam's report, as well as confirm that, no, it in fact was not Ricochet under the mask, despite fans telling them otherwise. And before we get into the AEW Dynamite review, yesterday saw the launch of our new debate show, Gripe Bombs, over on Parts Fun Known, where Ollie and I went head-to-head -head in direct competition to determine which was better. Pipe bomb or mass? And here's what happened. Difficult here because I think both both are very good promos for very different reasons. I think your pipe bomb is is giving that voice to the voiceless, and I think Steiner math. There's no reason for it to be as good as it is. It's just it's just become the thing, and I think that is what sways me because. Punk was telling a promo on the biggest stage of all to a partisan audience. Scott Steiner did this promo that was picked up later, transcended its own origins to become one of the touchstones of wrestling fandom in a way that the pipe bomb probably isn't. Like the pipe bomb, CM Punk's whole mix is CM Punk might be a, a cultural touchstone, but this is the defining thing, like you said, for Scott Steiner. Most people don't think about what else Scott Steiner's up to, but they think Steiner Matt. So my pick for the best promo is Matt. Oh my god. <laughs> Even at the end I thought you were doing a swerve joke. <laughs> I don't, don't swell. Oh my god. I can't believe you've just done this. Finally, 
we can put it to rest. I won the YouTube poll, I won the Patreon poll, I would have won the 2K24 tournament, but I got screwed via a fast count, and now I've won the debate. Math is greater than pipe bomb. Go watch the rest of the show by clicking the link in the video description or the card above my head, where Ollie, Laurie and I debate topics such as best member of The Shield, best match of 2024 so far, and who will be the breakout star of The White Six. But it's Thursday and you know what that means. It's time for my review of AEW Dynamite, aka the Why Mariah Why edition of AEW Dynamite in about five minutes. After a recap of MJ's turn from last week and his epic promo from Collision, Will Ospreay opened this week's show to run down Max. He said that Daniel Garcia is unsure if he'll ever wrestle again, which is wrestling speak for return pop coming soon, and said that the bidding war of 2024 gimmick didn't get over for MJF because Tony Khan decided to invest in guys like Ospreay instead. He claimed that he's got more talent in his left nut than MJF does in his whole body, bruv, and that he, Will Ospreay, represents what people like and want about AEW. He called out MJF, who appeared on the big screen, and challenged Will to an international championship match for next week's 250th edition of Dynamite, which Will accepted. Wrestling's most handsome man, Andrew Zarian, had previously reported that AEW had a huge match planned for an upcoming Dynamite, saying that it would be pay-per-view worthy. And it looks like this is the match he was talking about. A huge match that many expected to be at All In, and maybe it still will be. And that uncertainty about all of our fantasy bookings bled over into the first match of the evening. Brian Danielson has told us that his final full year in ring would be epic. But he stumbled at all of the opportunities he had. And as such, he does not want to lose the Owen Hart tournament as well, because what a way to end his career by main eventing All In for the World Heavyweight Championship. And on the other side of him is Hangman Adam Page, a man who is hell-bent and determined to make sure that Swerve Strickland is no longer the AEW World Champion. It made the finals of this tournament feel very unpredictable because both men were equally perfect winners. Jeff Jarrett served as the special guest enforcer for the match to ensure there were no shenanigans because Jeff Jarrett would never be involved in any shenanigans and his involvement paid off early when he looked to the heel entrance for Hangman Adam Page only for Hanger to walk out of the babyface tunnel. A great bit of subtle character work. He doesn't think he's a heel. It's all of us that thinks he's a heel. They then had what could best be described as a proper well good wrestling match. Proper wrestling this was. Nigel, who filled in for commentary because Jericho had barred Taz from the building again, was a great audio foil for Brian's hopes which elevated the match further. He also made a Steiner math joke because he clearly watched Gripe Bombs yesterday. This went through two ad breaks and was just absolutely fabulous. The final few minutes in particular really amped up the drama. Brian hitting the Busaiko knee out of nowhere, the pile driver on the floor, Brian being hit into the turnbuckle, the referee getting bumped. It was utterly compelling stuff. And after the referee got bumped, Jarrett revealed he was wearing a referee shirt, which led to a series of amazing near falls. Page hit the dead eye for another near fall, locked in the cross face, and it looked like Danielson had passed out, but his arm did not drop, and he reversed it into a pinfall and won the match, won the tournament, and won the chance to face Swerve Strickland for the AEW World Championship at All In. Look, I thought it was going to be Hangman. I kind of wanted it to be Hangman. But damn if I did not punch the air when Danielson won. It was so dramatic and it's going to lead to a very dramatic main event at Wembley and I cannot wait. Swerve came out for a promo to confirm the match and also announced himself for blood and guts on Team AEW, looking to do two things that Danielson couldn't do. He's already beaten Osprey, and now he's going to lead Team AEW to victory. And he also set up a match with Kazuchika Okada for next week's 250th episode. A bonkers first hour to the show this was. The Acclaim did a rap about the Bucks, I don't care, and Samoa Joe took on Chris Jericho in a stampede street fight. Senor Joe won jeans because he understood the assignment, and Jericho continued his trend of fun attitude era style brawls as they ended up backstage and the rest of the learning tree beat up Joe. Big Bill chokeslammed Joe onto a pallet and a forklift and Jericho then drove that forklift through a goddamn wall. It was awesome and very reminiscent of that hardcore triple threat at WrestleMania X7 aka the best WrestleMania match of all time. Look. I don't really like this Jericho thing either, but sometimes it works. Claudio Castagnoli, Pac, Carl Fletcher, and Tomohiro frickin' Ishii had around 11 minutes for their fatal four-way match to determine a new number one contender to either Osprey or MJF for the international championship. So they did what they needed to do. All of the moves! 
This was a pure sprint and a brilliant one at that. Pack got the win when he hit the Black Arrow and Brutalizer on Fletcher. He said he will be at All In. Hangman Page blew off Renee Paquette as she tried to interview him and told the Elite that he will be on their team for Blood and Guts, only so he can get his hands on Swerve Strickland. Mercedes Monet tried for a third time to celebrate that she is a double champion and was once again cut off by Britt Baker, who awesomely beat up the extra security and left Monet running scared. This Mercedes Monet is so much better than the one we had when she first debuted, and she sold all of this brilliantly. Brandon Cutler was attacked backstage by a returning Darby Allen, who challenged Jack Perry to a match next week, and the main event was the finals of the Women's Owen Hart tournament between Mariah May and last year's winner, Willow Nightingale. Tony Storm cheered on from ringside. This was her idea after all, and she watched as May mounted a comeback against the stronger Nightingale. She countered the pounce with her headbutt of all things. Stokely Hathaway and Chris Statlander interfered for some great near falls, and May rolled up a powerbomb attempt for the win. A very good main event, but it's the post-match that everyone will remember. May and Storm celebrated and danced up the ramp together, and May took the Owen Hart Cup belt and clocked Storm right in the face. She battered her with it, kicked Luther in the nut and sent him off the stage through a table, busted Storm open some more, attacked her with a shoe and kissed her bloody face to chance of you sick f Two weeks and two epic heel turns, both of which were executed perfectly. You can make the argument that doing both in a fortnight is overkill and I think to a degree I do agree with that. But this was also so unexpected that it did not cross my mind until after the fact. May's turn was always going to come. That's what this story has been building to for the last nine months. But I didn't think it would be here. This is one of the best heel turn angles that AEW have ever done and a brilliant next chapter in this long running story. The stakes for their title match are all in have grown and AEW's hot streak continues. Now go and watch Gripe Bombs in full by clicking the video on screen.